All right, y'all. Let's see if we can learn some stuff about scopes. So scope is, is a word that's applied to a variable. So a variable has a scope, and that scope is roughly the places the variable can be found or can be seen from. So for instance, here I have a variable x equals 1 declared here. So if I do something like say, oops, that's not in the right window. If I do something in here, like say, print out, and I really suppose I should use a formatted string because I'm going to have a bunch of these, so I'm just going to keep track of them all. Um, so this is going to say something like on line, oh, is that a crummy way? Let me say this. At the beginning, in the beginning, x is, and then brace out x. Okay, so now we hit run, we see at the beginning, x is 1. Cool. Great. All right, now let's declare a function. So I'm going to say define a function. I'm going to call it function because I'm real creative today. Um, then in this function, I'm going to do this print x. Uh, and I'm going to steal my form next. I'm going to say, all right, so that's inside the function at the beginning x is x okay so my expectation is that that's going to print one right it's going to say inside the function at the beginning x is one um so when i hit run I don't see that at all. And the reason I don't see that at all is because I never called the function. So let me call the function. Okay, so after I call the function, I get my print line that's coming from line nine here at the beginning, x is one. And then inside the function at the beginning, x is one. Now, funky story, this x that it's reading is this outside x. And then oftentimes you have this case where you want to change that variable in here, right? So you want to do something like, say, let x be 4. And now it started whining at me. And let me just ignore it and see if it runs. The suspense is kind of killing me. It's not doing anything. Oh, there we go. All right. So, unbounded local error, local variable x is referenced before assignment. Okay. So, let's talk about two words here that we have. There's going to be three words by the end of this. Um, this x that I'm declaring up here at the top is called a global variable. So that's a way of saying that it's visible in the entire script that I'm writing. So the entire main.py file can see this thing. Um, in my function here, that's why I was allowed to print it out, because it's a global variable, so it's visible everywhere. Now, the thing that's gone on here is I tried to assign a local variable x is 4. So let me do that assignment at the top here and then hit run. Okay, so at the beginning, x is one, that's the global x, right? Uh, and then in my function, I've created an x that's what's called local to the function. So this x is visible in this function. If I made a different function, call function 2 just because. And I'm going to copy my formatted print line inside the function 2 at the beginning and hit run. Oops, and I never called it, so I should call it. Try that again. 
Okay, so what I'm seeing is that I have this x that I set to four, and that's inside of this function. It's not visible to the world at large. So it's not visible to the, um, to the main area of this. So it's all, it only exists inside that function while it's running, and then it's discarded afterwards. So remember that a variable really just represents a little, like a box in the memory. So that box is created when the function runs and then is discarded afterwards. That's, that's not quite right, but who cares? Um, so the, uh, really, yeah, there's, the inner, the exact inner workings of a computer are a little bit more complicated than that, but it's totally fine if you think that way. So in this other function too, it's looking inside the function. It's saying, okay, is there an X in here? And there isn't. And so then it goes to the next up scope. So it goes to the next area above it. So function two is, it lives in the main area. And so it goes, is there an X that I have inside of this function? No. Is there an X that I have inside of the global scope? Yes, I'm gonna use that one. So it's gonna pull that global X out. Now where this gets a little bit sticky, okay, so it gets a little bit sticky in that you can have several instances because you can do this really weird thing where you define a function in a function. It's not very useful function. So I'm gonna define an inner function. And that's gonna have, uh, I'm just gonna snake this line here. And I'm going to say inside the inner function at the beginning, x is x. And then I'm going to put a couple afters. Uh, let's see. So inside the function at the beginning. So this is inside the function at the end. Oops. And that needs to be inside the function, not inside the inner function. Okay, so let's run this and see what we get. Okay, so the inner function is reading out, where's my inner function line? Oh, why is the inner function line not printing? The inner function line's not printing because the uh, inner function was never called. So if I run this, I can see that in the inner function, x is four, and that's because it's going up to get the next highest one. It's not going all the way to the global scope, it's only going to the scope that is contained in. So if I comment this guy out, oops, stop. Okay, so if I comment that out, I get at the beginning, x is one, right? That's my global x. Inside the function, x is one, and that's because now that I've commented this out, there is no variable x inside this function, so it goes to the next highest scope to find one. On the inner function, it's looking for an x, so it goes out to the function and says, is there an x defined in this function? The answer to that is no. So then it goes out to the next highest scope and looks. So there is one in the main, and so it finds that and stops there. Um, if you don't have one defined anywhere, it will now start throwing errors undefined names, and that's because it doesn't exist anywhere, right? So everything that you're, uh, all the variables that you're referencing have to exist somewhere in the program that you're running, right? And the, um, the main kind of scope is the last place that it has available to look. So it'll go there and if it doesn't find it, it'll throw an error. Okay, so should be noted, we can have multiple instances of different variables. 
Okay, so what I'm doing, right, is when I call this function, I'm going to set x as 4. That's declaring a new variable that's local in scope to the function x. And then it's going to say inside the function at the beginning, x is 4. And then I'm defining this inner function, which has itself an x, right? And then I'm going to call that inner function, and then I'm going to print out inside the function at the end, x is, x is whatever it is. And now I'm a little bit, I'm not sure whether it's going to be 4 or 6, because I'm not, I'm not sure whether this was a reassign of the x that was outside of it, or whether this is a new local variable. Okay, fine. I am actually sure, but go ahead and guess, and then we'll run it and see. Okay, so the answer is that it is, it is in fact a new variable x that's part of the inner function, and so it doesn't overwrite the outside one. Now, the trick is here that you're going to find this behavior to be very convenient sometimes and to be mega annoying other times. Um, so the reason that this is happening, like the reason that this is a good feature is that this lets you reuse variables um, names without paying too much attention to other places that that variable name might be used. Like if you have several thousand lines of code, you probably don't want to have to search around for another variable like n or x or y to hold x, y coordinates, or you don't want to search all over uh, all over the place to see if you're using the um, if you're using the variable uh, name as something somewhere, right? You wouldn't want it to be forever reserved because then you'd have to get really wacky with your naming schemes. They'd be a couple sentences long. It'd be really really obnoxious, right? So. This is in some ways handy. In other ways, it's hella annoying because what if I want to actually change the mo what if I want to actually modify the global x? What if I'm using it to keep score in a game or something? And I want to have a function that I can call that increments the score. Well, um, frankly, there's a better way to do that, but what the hell? Let me show you how to how you can do it in here. So instead of saying x is x is 4 here, the first thing I'm going to do is say, look, I want this function to use the global x variable, right, and then set that to 4. So now this is saying, go out to the global x and grab that, because we're going to use that. When, when I say x, I mean the global. This says, when we use x, it'll be the global one. All right, so now when I run this, oh, I don't have a printout of, of my global variable. <laughs> At the end, the global x is, and I suppose I should change this to global x. Okay, so now at the end of this, right, my global variable x is 4, and you'll notice that function 2 picked up the changed version, right? So when I had that commented out, I had fun the global x is 1, and then I changed x inside the function, right? And then inside function 2 at the beginning, x is 1. So that's saying, right, that function 2 is just using the global x this whole time. So let me, let me try that on the inner function. So what if I say I want the inner function to use the global x? See how that x that's here in the function is still 4, right? The global x is only found in this inner function. So in here, when it changes x to 6, that change sticks, 
right? And that means that my function two on the outside has access to that global variable, right? So um, let me show you another word. So there's another available word here, which is non-local. And I have found a great number of tutorials on the internet that seem to think that this is either not interesting, not useful, or not different than global. Um, and it is none of those. It is interesting because it lets you pop up one level, not all the way to the global scope, but one level. So it says, this x is not local to the interior of this function, which means that it will go to the next highest level and check for an x and then use that one. So that's gonna, look, that's gonna get my behavior. This x is four that's local to the function is then picked up by this non-local x declaration in the inner function, changed, and then it gets outputted at the end here, right, as six. So it actually got changed there. Now, I wanna try one thing that I haven't actually tried before, so I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna comment out x is four. And now I wonder, because I don't know, whether the, non-local x is going to keep going up levels until it finds a non-local x value or if it's going to error out because there's not an x one level up i don't know let's try hmm okay so it looks like it's only going one level up and looking for an x so it doesn't seem to be able to go all the way to global we know that global would work so if i use this if I say it's global, then it's working just fine. So non-local is a good way to look in one container, right? So you don't have access to it in the thing you're in, you can maybe go up a level. Um, let me try one more thing like that. I just wanna see what happens if I change this to non-local. So now this is one level inside of main, right? So will it go up one and find it, even though I said non-local instead of global? And the answer is no. Okay, cool. So it really does true, it really is truly distinct from global, right? So global gets the one that's in the main and non-local gets the one that's in the container that this function is in. This function, happens to be in the main container and so the right answer was to use the global here not the word not the word not local okay so clear as mud uh further 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 weirdnesses or you have to remember that uh pass by well mutable and immutable types are still a thing right so this is some of the answer to why variables are acting strangely. That's the rest. When you put the two together, if you understand them both really well, you'll always understand why variables are asking, acting the way they are. Um, it does get a little confusing. Um, the one last thing I have, I'm just gonna copy and paste some code, drop it in here because it, this is already a longer and more involved video than I was kind of hoping for. Okay. so. Suppose I have an object class that has an initialized method that sets x to 10. And then in there, I have a function that sets x to 20 and then prints out x and prints out self.x. And then I have a de declaration, right? I'm making an object and then I'm calling the function. So let me run that. Oh, and I suppose that sh this should be some somehow a formatted string. Uh, so the variable x is x and the um, variable self dot x is Okay, so 
this is yet a different variable, right? Um, so this is x is 20, right? Which is, um, sorry, that was a dumb statement. Of course, x is 20, I forced it to be. Um, so this x is local to the function that's inside of that object, right? So uh, this thing is of even more limited scope. Um, it, let's see if I can, let's try to make that global for just a second. I just want to, I'm just curious whether this works the way I think it does. Uh, let's see, oh, and let me move this line. All right, so, right, if we say go grab the global variable x and modify it, then it does that very happily. Um, it won't go get the self.x if you use non-local. It'll just yell at you. You'll notice too that the word non-local is not, it's not throwing an error in the IDE in here. And that's basically because things are a little bit hard for it to um, flag with this. Um, but you can see that there's no bond, there's no um, non-local X found here. And that's because this function doesn't live in a box that has an X associated to it, right? There's a, there's a, an object that has an X associated to it, but that's not X, right? That's self dot X. Okay, so I'm gonna just, uh, I'm gonna put that back to global and comment that line out. All right, so let me comment the version that I have here, but I think this is a thing you probably need to play around with. Okay, so when we use X, it'll be the global one. Uh, reassigning X is four is fine. Uh, printing this seems pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this thing defines a function inside the function. Um, that's just old code. So this is a new X that only exists inside the inner function. And then we have, um, this is call the inner function. And then this print line seems pretty obvious. Uh, this is a second function for illustrative purpose. Uh, this is a first function, a function to experiment with. That's not how you spell the word experiment. Okay, then this calls the two functions, call functions. Uh, this is an experimental class. Uh, I think the initialize method's pretty obvious. That stuff seems pretty obvious. This is make an instance of the object and then this is call the objects function and then that last line seems pretty apparent to you okay so remember right there are, there are kind of three key ideas and two of them have keywords so there are local variables right those are local to whatever thing they're in. So that can be, a, um, can be an object, or it can be a function in an object, or it can be a function. I said function in an object, which was stupid. It's a method when it's in an object, right? So they can be part of an object. They can be part of a method in an object. They can be part of a function. They can be part of an inner function, 
and then the global keyword goes out to the main scope and grabs the variable of that name there. Uh, the non-local one looks for an, a container function to, that has this variable's name in it and then grabs that one. And then um, it should be noted, right, that modifications to global variables aren't uh, aren't always persistent unless you uh, unless you're a little bit careful with them. So if you want to modify a global variable, you need to say global x and then modify it, and then it'll stay modified, right? So um, that's kind of the gist of this. And when you put it together with mutable and immutable types, it gets to be a real head twister. But you got it. It's not impossible, it's just a little bit hard. And unfortunately, it's hard for a good reason, right? I, I really do want to be able to reuse variables names over and over and over again. Um, the further thing is if you import a library or a module, right, you have no idea what the variables names in there are. And so you would have no idea how to avoid them at all if they weren't scoped. So you, you really do want this as a feature as, as kind of aggravating as it is occasionally.